Hi friends. Today we're going to talk about misconceptions about the differences between self pub and traditional pub on AuthorTube. So very quickly, I want to say there was a video posted earlier this week by someone talking about why they didn't want to self-publish, which is a perfectly fine way to feel. Personally, I want to traditionally publish and I will explain our reasons for that momentarily. But um, the bulk of the video had some very big misconceptions about differences between self-pub and trad pub. And I'm not going to mention the person, I'm not going to share their video, mostly because I feel like I am a larger creator than they are. And I don't want anyone to feel like I'm attacking them or um, bringing any bullying or anything their direction. I just feel like this video was shared with me because a lot of people are sharing it around. And I think that there are maybe viewers who are viewers of mine who may see this and make it some kind of a wrong idea about what I think AuthorTube is in general and what I think um, the differences between self and traditional publishing are. So the first thing that I want to do want to say is my disclaimer is that I do want to traditional publish and my reason for that is very simple. It is that I have an inferiority complex and I feel like um, self-publishing for me I would never feel like I actually um, was any good and therefore I would never really be able to just self-pub. I would need the validation of traditional publishing um, to feel like I was actually any good at it and that I should continue to do it. That's just me personally. There's no like self-pub's better, trad pub's better on that. It's just Jessica needs someone from a big five to give her validation and that's it. Of course the big five do often publish books that are very shitty so is that validation really worth anything? I'll leave that up to you to decide. So I made some notes um, while I was watching the video. And so here's one of the like the main key things was that uh, this person was talking about how they wanted to trad pub over self pub because they didn't want to have to work on selling their book. Now, if you are wanting to end pub, yes, you know that you are going to have to market your book. You're going to have to sell yourself. You're going to have to present your book to the world so that everyone can see it and people will know that it exists. What a lot of people don't know is that you also have to do this with traditional publishing. Whether you are an indie pub, which is a smaller press, or one of the larger big five, which big four, whichever you want to go with on that, you do still have to market yourself and try to sell yourself. You still have to do things. Unless you are one of the one person percent of people being published, you still have to put just as much work in as someone who is a self-published author. If there is any point to that, it would be, or any like proving point of that, it would be the um, tweet that was released a few weeks ago that was um, during the uh, Simon & Schuster publishing Ra Penguin Random, I'll link it down below, uh, but basically they were talking about the court documents that had been released by Penguin Random House and Simon and Schuster talking about of books they had sold of trade books they had sold in that year. 50% of trade books published in that year had sold less than 12 copies. And 90 I think it was 90% or 95% I again I'll link it down below where the exact numbers are. But it was a nine and a something percent sell less than 2000 copies. So I know people who are indie published who have sold more than 2,000 copies of their books. I know people who are self-published who have sold more than 2,000 copies of their books. So you still have to hustle. You still have to put just as much work into it if you are a trad pub as you do if you are self-pubbed. Just like anything else in the world, you are going to get out what you put in. If you don't put in the work to get your audience and to get your book out there, you're not going to get an investment on your return. That leads us to discussing about being bad with money or being frugal, being uh, smart with money, being money-wise, whatever the case may be. Okay, anyway, being risky with money was kind of the, the terminology used. Um, being self-published is risky. And I think trad pub is just as risky, um, especially for someone who in this video is discussing going to get a master's degree to, to basically to feel validation. 
If you think that publishing a book, self-publishing, is more expensive than a master's degree in the American society, I want to know what school you're going to. Because I don't think that's accurate. But that's a whole other thing for a whole other day. One of the complaints was that people who self-pub never edit their books, but also people who self-pub have to spend a bunch of money because they're paying for editors for their books. So those two things don't really go together. So let's talk about what the actual deal is there. People who self-pub, not everybody, but a lot of people, especially those who are here on AuthorTube, we know that if you're going to self-pub a book, you need at the very least a developmental editor because that is the person who's going to help you build your book. There are multiple different kinds of editors. There are developmental, there are line edits, there are copy edits. There are different kinds of editors. And I'm not the person to tell you the differences in those because I've never had to hire an editor. Um, so I haven't went into that full force. But there are definitely different kinds of editors, different kinds of people that you can hire to help you with your book. And that whole process is part of the writing journey. And if you are a self-published author and you're not taking that part of the journey, you are hindering yourself. Now, if you are traditionally published, typically, but not always, typically, you would not pay someone to edit your book. Typically, you would give it to an agent, your agent would give it to an editor. I mean, there's a whole lot of different steps. It depends on what kind of agent you have. Some agents like to edit themselves. Some people like to hire an editor. Some people like to sell your book and then you get an editor. There's a whole lot of things going on there that just, it's a lot. Okay. It's a lot. Author tubers are not on author tube to sell their books. I don't know. As author tube grandma, first off, um, I've been here for almost six years, like legitimately the only person who is still on AuthorTube regularly that has been here longer than me is the one person who was name dropped in this video. So if you watch that video, you know who that was. So legitimately the people who were here when I got here are no longer here because they have all been run out for the most part. There's still a couple people posting semi-regularly, but not really. Okay. People who are here now, people who are on the author tube now. Uh, we're not here to sell our books to people. I'm sorry, I just slapped my mic. Uh, we're not here to sell our books to people. We're here to share our journey, to find writer friends, to um, find a community of people who can help us support us, help us learn things, help it. That's what I'm here to do right now. Uh, help us learn things, help us be better people and to be better writers. I legitimately have a triannual event that is focused on this. Like I have a whole ass event that's been going on for, I think this is our third year, uh, that is focused on helping writers write, helping people get together to do things, helping people learn, finding your people. The event has blossomed so much from this 12 hour sprint-a-thon to we have a 48 hour write-a-thon now. And there's, it's even more. Like once you get to the end of this October and you get to the closing chat and you see everything that we're doing, like we're legitimately building the community that this person is asking for. It's already here. You just got to open your eyes. The comment that self-published books are never good. Uh, there are a lot of people who make this comment. Self-published books are not good. I disagree. First off, if you walk into a book going, this book is self-published and I don't like self-published books because they're not good. You're not going to enjoy it because you've already made up your mind about the book. And self-pub and trad pub can be just as good or bad. Uh, and good is subjective. Bad is subjective. Not everybody likes what everybody likes. Personally, purple prose to me is boring as fuck. I would rather read something that is straight to the point and has lots of action and fun and adventure. I don't really care about your purple prose. That's not the kind of reader that I am. If you sell me a trad pub book and it's boring AF and it's written very prettily, I'm going to say that's a bad book. If you sell me a self-published book that doesn't have the best prose ever, but is fun and enjoyable and makes me laugh or makes me cry, I'm going to say that's a good book. It's all in the mind of the beholder. But it's not the fact that it is self-published that makes it good or bad. And it's not the fact that it is trad published that makes it good or bad. It's what you enjoy individually and what you bring to the table when you open that book. Saying that author tubers who self-publish don't have their books edited is a very ignorant way to look at the author tube community as a whole. I 
am friends with multiple people. Again, grandma of AuthorTube. I've been here forever. I know so many people who are self-pubbed. I also know people who are trad pubbed and we're going to talk about them a little bit later. Uh, but I know so many people who are self-pubbed and they pay for editors. They pay for people to go over their works to help them figure out developmental things. Like they have people who are in their corner. They are an entire team of people. They work with cover designers. They work with other people who are also freelance, because let's call it that. Let's not say it's a self-published book. Let's say it's a community of freelancers who are writing a book and presenting people with a product because, you know, you have freelance editors, you have freelance cover designers, and you have an author who is writing this book and they are coming together to make a product to sell you for you to enjoy. Now, if that's not your thing, that's fine. But to say that they're all bad because of that. And here's the other thing talking about how self-published authors are capitalists. Let's call it what it is. The head executives of the big five. I'm sorry. One day I hope to work for one of you. I'm sorry. I hope to make you a lot of money. The, the executives of the big five, they're the capitalists. Okay. They're the ones that are making all of the money. Self-pub and indie pub and trad pub authors all can make similar amounts of money by putting in the same amount of work. So not any of them are really any more capitalist than the other. Again, I'm sorry. Please be my friend. Please buy my book. It's going to be a while that like you've got time. But when it comes to being a capitalist, I hope I, I hope I make you a lot of money. Okay. Price points for self-pub books are typically a lot lower than what you're going to get from a traditionally published book. That's because there are less people to sell to or less people to pay out. Now, that is a selling point for people who are self-publishing. Um, some of people have said, I want to self-pub because I want to make the majority of the money, which is fine. Again, from the community that I have grown on AuthorTube, the people that I have seen, for the most part, like, yes, we want to make money. We want to support ourselves. You shouldn't but fault someone for wanting to support themselves by, is befault a word? Oh my gosh, whatever. Anyway, you shouldn't fault someone for wanting to be able to pay their bills and to buy groceries and to take care of their family doing something that they love versus doing a job that they hate and then having to do their job that they love that's not making them money any money on the weekends and taking time away from their family. We live in a capitalist society. Is it great? No, it's not great. But to say that people who are self-published authors are capitalists and that makes their books bad? Like, I don't understand the concept of how these things co just go together. They don't. So I don't, I don't know. Anyway, the true sign of an elitist is talking about how you're not an elitist while you laugh about being an elitist. And laughing while you say, I don't mean to offend anyone. I'm just going to leave that there. Two very large points that I want to make here at the end. Self-publishing is not an answer to not being good enough to trad pub. It's not. I've never said, I'm going to try to trad pub because, again, big five coming for you. Uh, I, I want to trad pub. But if my book's not good enough, I'll self-pub because I've queried before. I've, I've spent time. I mean, we're talking a decade ago and I'm old now. It's fine. Um, I, I've queried before and I've gotten feedback on my book and it's not been good. And I've been like, you know what? It's probably time to shelf that until I can come up with something better. I didn't go, you know what? I should self-publish this. But to say that people who self-publish are people who are not good enough to make it in traditional publishing is absolutely ludicrous. And when you yourself say things like, I might self-pub, but I want to do it after I've trad pubbed so I can bring the audience with me. That gets us back to the, you still have to market your book as a trad pub author. And it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter how long you've been trad pubbed for. You can self-publish a book. I, one of my favorite authors is hoping to self-publish one of their books that they have traditionally published previously, but did not do well. I don't begrudge her for that because the book is fantastic. But if this book is self-published, are you then going to think that it's not any good because it didn't sell well? No, it just didn't have the marketing that other things had in that time period. It's just as good as anything else. It's just as good as their books that have made it on the New York Times bestsellers list. It's just that that book didn't sell well because it wasn't marketed as well. And to say that the marketing company, you know, you don't have to work as hard. You still have to work just as hard. You still have to work just as hard to sell your book. It doesn't matter 
who is fronting it, who's got their pocketbook out there, you still have to sell yourself. You still have to go into it with the mindset of I am going to do everything I can do to sell this book. Because whether it is wanting to be able to publish the next book, because if you don't make enough money, they're not going to buy any more from you is and and like for me, it's about the story. It's about telling the story. It's about sharing the stories of the people that are in my brain with other people. And yes, I want to make money and I want to be able to support myself without having to go to a 55 hour a week job and then come home and try to put these fucking videos together and measly write a book at the same time because I'm here because I enjoy you guys. I'm not here to sell you my book because I don't have a fucking book. I'm here to have fun and to and talk to you guys about my process and what we're doing and to learn things from you. I learned just as much from you guys as I've learned from anything else that I've ever done with writing, whether it was college courses or doing master classes or whatever. I've learned just as much from you as I've learned from any of that. And to shit on all of AuthorTube while laughing about it and saying that you're not is offensive, not just to me, but to the people that I watch and to the people that are my friends and that I enjoy. And we're going to get to speaking of author tubers, traditional published, let's get to one final note. The final note being that one of the biggest things that trad pub people really go for is I want to see my book on a shelf in a bookstore. And that was one of the points that this person made. I want to see my book on a shelf in a bookstore. Let me tell you about my friend Lindsay Puckett, who is publishing from Scholastic a book in the month of October. It's coming out. It's going to be great. It's called The Glass Witch. It is a mid-grade. It is a mid-grade about a disabled character who has a pet bunny and has to fight a witch and save her whole fucking town. But you know what? Traditionally published book is not going to be on a fucking bookshelf because Barnes and Noble decided that they weren't going to sell, they weren't going to shelf any books from trad pub authors that weren't the top two sellers in that genre or some other bullshit. I'll again, I'll link that down below because it's a whole fucking mess. So one of my friends is not going to have their book on a shelf, even though they're traditionally published. So saying that being a traditionally published author is going to get you on a bookshelf means fucking nothing anymore. Because if they can do this to mid-grade authors, they can do it to anybody. They can do it to any of us. And what are we going to do? Ain't a fucking thing we can do about it. I mean, we can buy from our indie author or from our indie sellers. We can get from libraries. We can do all of those things. But we were already doing all of those things. And now you took away one place where people can go to see your book and to buy it. Especially children who don't have access to like, well, I guess children probably do have access to phones and shit now like we didn't have. But you know what I mean. And... On the reverse side of that, there are self-published authors who have their books in Barnes & Noble. The one that I know of most, that most of you would know about is Jenna Morassi. We do know that she has her books in bookstores, in Barnes & Noble. I don't know if that's just in her area or universally. I don't know. But she can walk into that Barnes & Noble and see her book on a shelf. Whereas my friend who's traditionally published cannot walk into the store and see her book on the shelf. So to say that that's a reason why you want to be trad published means that you don't know enough about what's going on in the publishing industry to even talk about this situation. To walk into a conversation and even if the conversation is just your opinion, because it is, and I get that. And again, that's why I'm not mentioning this person by name or linking any of their things. Like I don't I don't want you to go and see what this person's talking about. I don't want you to, A, because don't watch their video because it's just going to make the algorithm go crazy. And then they're just going to get more popular. And we're just going to have more people shitting on all of our friends because they can do this. My point is, you walked into this conversation with bullet points of why you want to self-publish. And one of your main points, a couple of your main points, like the not having to market your book and you want a book that sells to be traditionally published. You feel like you, to get a book that sells, you feel like you have to be traditionally published or to get your book on a shelf. You feel like you have to be traditionally published. And in the climate that we're in as authors, that is not a fact. That is no longer the case. There is more work that has to be put in and there are things that we have to do as readers and as authors to fight for our friends to get them on bookshelves, even when they're traditionally published. And if you don't come into this community 
trying to look at things as what it is. We are a community of people who are typically outside of this video because I'm fucking angry. Typically, we are helpful and try to work with each other and try to do these things. I was as angry as I am right now. I think I've gotten worse as the video has went on. And that's, that's me. That's a me problem. What I would like to say is, in conclusion, there are a lot of misconceptions about self-published and traditionally published authors, things that they think, which how do you know what other people think, it universally, and things that are a fact about the industry as a whole. And I want you to remember, as my friends and as people that I love and people that I care about, if you're here and you're viewing this and you're like, I totally get it, know that I'm here for you. If you're here and you're watching this and you're like, I don't get it, please feel free to ask questions below. Um, view the resources. I will try to help you out the best that I can. Again, I'm here for y'all. I'm here to try to help you out. I'm, I'll do what I can. It's not a lot, but I do what I can. If you're not sure what the difference is between self-pub and trap pub, if you're confused about what the differences are, what the pros and cons are, or if you just have misconceptions about the pros and cons of self-pub versus trad pub, we're here for you. And if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. Again, if I find out that any of you watched this and went to find this person and attack this person, I will ban you from all things that I ever do ever again, because I don't feel like that is beneficial to anyone in any situation. And so I've got my eyes on you and I will find you. Okay. And that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you subscribe button and notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.